when is someone that's when is someone who's higher ranked more likely to like put it on you? It's when you're giving them a hard time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. Are you always getting smashed at jujitsu and you don't know why? There might be some reasons. It's the thing. We got some archetypes and you may be one of these. Now, it's tough because you just don't know. And this is something that's not discussed in jiu-jitsu. Usually, if you went to your coach and you went, oh, hey, coach, I'm getting smashed a lot. I'm a white belt. I just started. They're like, good. They give you the Jocko Willink. Good. You're like, yeah, but I'm doing pretty well, but I keep getting smashed a lot. Good. I'm asking you because it's actually not good. (laughs) No. (laughs) My My life sucks. Please help me. So... Joe, explain. So I got a question uh, from someone on the Instagram, which I'll, I'll just summarize, but they said, um, hey, you know, could you guys talk about smaller guys rolling with bigger and higher ranked guys and getting injured? And so this cat said, at the gym, I roll pretty hard. People know that. I'm a two-stripe white belt. Get some. Get there. Um, and I train more than five times a week. I've left my full time job to focus. I've left my job to train on BJJ full time. Whoa! Amazing. Yeah. So I find myself getting hurt quite often, um, and I want to train as much. Uh, so I want to train my stuff as much as they do too. I try to match my strengths with lower belts. Um, so in any case, there's there's, a, there's the, you know the, the message goes on, and and I'll respond to that. You know, we'll continue that conversation. But it got me thinking, like. Okay, so you're getting you're getting beaten up. You're getting like you're getting smashed, right? Which is kind of different to getting beaten up. But, you know, it's like you're just getting sometimes mauled by people, mm. and and smashed as I see it sometimes implies that there's a certain intensity to to the domination that you're receiving. Yeah, right. And so it got me thinking. Well, you know, I over my years I might have been responsible for smashing a few people. I definitely have. <laughs> Maybe I I have definitely been smashed before. And it's often taken me, it's often taken the input of someone external to me to let me know, hey, that's why that's happening. Or it's taken reflection from me. Uh, that's why that person mm. beat the shit out of me. So I got four archetypes that I came up with. Oh, please do tell. All right. Well, first one is you're a dick. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> You're the problem. You are the problem. You are just a bit of a fuckwit. People don't really like you on the mats, right? And for whatever reason, it could, you might be a bit arrogant. You might, be, um, you might go a little bit too hard on people that you shouldn't. Maybe you knee people in the head when you're inside control. Yeah, that's right. Maybe, maybe you have a particular quality where you kind of just lose control in certain scenarios and just fuck them. I just see red and bodies hit the floor. That's right. You know, like... <laughs> And, or, or maybe you, um, I don't know, there could be any reason to that, right? We're not trying yeah. to, uh, no, and not it's trying not to necessarily the... intentional. Here's the thing. It's, I, I believe with the, you're a dick thing, it, it's a lack of self-awareness. You may have no ill will towards anyone, but as a result of you lacking self-awareness, you've offended people, you know, and I, I've done this, I've done this, <laughs> you know, you've, you've either snubbed the champion or you haven't met someone before who's kind of a big deal and you're like, oh, who are you? What do you do? And they're like, oh, this guy doesn't know how famous I am. You know, things like this. It's, it's actually not necessarily personal, but maybe you're making social mistakes which are, are making enemies of people who are going to beat the f*** out of you. That's let's right. Be, let's be honest. Like that it's, within, it's within another person's power to control the role. If they're better than you, they're stronger than you, and they can put it on you, they can choose how hard they go. And if you kick them in the balls or you stuck your finger in the eye or you, you accidentally snotted on them or something, they may not be happy with you. That's right. And I think probably in that yeah, to that point, the fair way to frame this is they think you're a dick. They think you're a dick. Right? right? That's how you come across. And so there's a whole bunch of scenarios that can unfold in a role that, that you know, are going to indicate – that people are reading, right? We're reading these social cues all the time. Sure. And so if someone thinks you're a bit of a dick and then you're rolling with them, it's very plausible that they're probably going to put it on you a little bit because they're yeah. going to be like, this person's a dick, <laughs> right? So that's, that's the first one. And it doesn't mean that that's the right way to, to treat you. But this, this no, can happen. That's exactly right. Now, and, and there could even be a mistake there where you've taken 
Like you've seen the way things unfold and you've interpreted this, the environment as, okay, I got to win. I got to use the submissions. My, my goal is to win. Oh, yep. Use, okay, yep. I got to go as hard as I can because I see people going hard. So you've interpreted the place to your best abilities and there's perhaps been a mis, uh, misinterpretation there. Yeah, lack of right? communication. So I, yeah, I do think it's important that for the scenario where you are a dick, yeah, it's not, we're not saying it's your fault. No. Right? Or maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. <laughs> maybe. You know, maybe because, look, I've, I've, there's plenty of wits out there. Of course. And some of those wits train jiu-jitsu. There's, all walks train jiu-jitsu. So if you're one of those people. And let's be honest, I've been one of those guys and sometimes still am. But I have enough self-awareness to know when it's, I've gone wrong. I, I've gone there. And at least now what I do is if I, if I, if I went too hard or if I've been mean or rude... I will, I'll apologize. I go, you know, I fucked up. I didn't think about it at the time and I was a dick, you know, and it, you know, I have enough self-awareness. It's only taken me 17 years, Joe. How about that? I'm but, very proud but, of you, but James. Thank you. Thank you. Joe's here to witness my personal journey to become yeah. a real person. But there's, there's, there's another archetype in here, isn't there, Joe? There is. This is this, the, the, uh, the polar opposite. This is they're a dick. They, they are the problem. Right. Not necessarily you. And these people exist too. Yeah. You go to some gyms and there's some people that are quits. They are cruel. Yeah. And they, for whatever reason, they decided maybe through no action of your own, they just decided they just want to put it on you. They want to beat you up. Yeah. And they are being abusive of their power. Right. Mm. And they, they, in that environment, they have superior power to yours. And that's a very tough scenario because you like you usually have to be, you have to get, you have to like mix with those people for a while to realize that. And then you're going to weather oh, that storm. Kind of yeah. Yeah. And it makes you think, oh, it's me. When actually, no. And this is, this is true of any kind of toxic relationship. Am I the problem? Is it, is it them? You know, what's going on here? Because you, you just want to get better at jujitsu and you don't understand why someone rolls you so hard. And you're like, surely that's excessive. And that's the thing, when you first start out in jiu-jitsu, you don't know. You're like, well, I guess that's just rolling with a black belt mm -hmm. or that's just rolling with a higher belt. I guess they just beat us up. And, and sometimes there's, there's an acceptance that comes with it, which is not necessary. Like sometimes it's important to actually ask somebody else, say, hey, does that person roll you that hard or is it just me? Because it might, that might be the case. That's right. And I think, of course, the same thing ties in here in terms of, the misinterpretation of things, like that's always a, a potential, right? But um, yeah, some people have quits. It's a tricky one. Now, just an extension of this is that the gym itself might be the dick. <laughs> like culturally, that place, or it, you know what, it, like it could have a shit culture where yeah. they just bat, like beat people up and like only the strongest will survive. The, the dick factory. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you will walk out a f***ing cock. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, <laughs> but uh, perhaps it's perhaps it's a, it, the gym's fine. It's just culturally not the gym for you. Yeah, that's, I think that's an important thing to to mention. It might just be a miss. You're just not in the right place. And sometimes people get away with it. Like oftentimes, co coaches can turn a bl blind eye if, like, say they've got a mat enforcer, whatever belt level, and they're like, they're tough, they're rough, they get it done, and they allow them to not be friendly because they're the they're the pit bull you know what i mean like they're, they're like oh, if you're gonna go anywhere near that that guy you're gonna get bitten but we kind of want to keep him you know what i mean and maybe that's acceptable to you maybe it's not but i think this is another thing that like when you spend a bit more time in the gym you're like all right well i can't you know you have to be also maybe if the gym is not gonna get rid of someone who's who is potentially rough and it maybe might injure you then you gotta go, i gotta stick away from them yeah you know if they won't change yeah this episode is brought to you by parry athletics parry athletics make the best no gi training gear in the world of jiu-jitsu they've been a show sponsor of ours for some time now we love them we love their gear they make the greatest training shorts both for in the gym lifting weights and doing your mobility as well as being on the mat you can get 20 percent off when you use the code bulletproof 20 at checkout, go to parryathletics.com and make sure to use the code bulletproof20 to get 20% off. What's, what's, what's number three, Mr. Joe? Third archetype. This is perhaps a little bit more uh, positive, a bit more yeah. optimistic is 
you are better than you think you are. Hey. And right. where this plays out is, say to, to our friend here, is like, I'm a two-stripe white belt. Like I'm, and the question was in regards to training with people that are higher ranked hmm. and that, that are bigger. Now, when is, someone that's, when is someone who's higher ranked more likely to like put it on you? It's when you're giving them a hard time, when you're good. Yep. And this is something that I, I always, I find myself having this conversation a lot with women mm. because uh, I think for a lot of women, like early on in the, in the journey, they don't understand that like if they're like, when they're applying their jujitsu in a role, if it is actually threatening the, the, the male that they're rolling with, that male will ramp up his strength and intensity because he doesn't want to lose. Yeah. And that's a, a really unfortunate fact because most males will then dominate. Like they will have, a, they will have that advantage. Potentially. Right? potentially yeah. yeah, generally, not always. But so it creates this kind of shit dynamic, right? Hmm. Um, and, and I say that it's like if it's, if it's an inexperienced male, right, on the mats, sure. the, the more experienced cats hopefully are across that. But so point there is that when you're actually a threat to someone, they're going to start to put it on you. So if you're consistently a threat and if you sprinkle in, you're also a little bit of a dick, we can really ramp <laughs> this shit up. Maybe. Um, <laughs> motherfuckers are going to come back hard on you and they're going to roll you super hard. Yeah, and, but actually this is a sign of respect. <laughs> so yeah. I said this, uh, so shout out our boy Jeremy Martinez. He caught, me, that guy. he caught me in a weird choke. It wasn't a guillotine. It was like a... It's like a no arm uh, side guillotine, like a, a, a side naked choke, not a front naked choke. Very you know, nice, yeah. I thought I'd pass. Like I kind of took him down. He was kind of snagging my neck up. Anyway, I was passing and I'm like, I can't get my head out of this position. This isn't a normal guillotine. And he's turning into me, but I was convinced. Ah. And then he f- tapped me. I was like, God damn it. Has Jeremy Martinez become the arch nemesis of the Bulletproof for BJJ <laughs> No. That motherfucker put me to sleep once. He's, he's, He's the Jeremy's greatest. notching up W's over no, here. We're copping he, else. He son. wants to join in. <laughs> <laughs> he's the greatest opponent of Bulletproof. We love this guy. But here's the thing. I said to him afterwards, I now respect you more. You know what that means? I'll roll you harder, son. You, I'm not taking it easy on you. Yeah, I'm not no, making mistakes it's anymore. It's not revenge. Well, I'm trying but I'm, not to. I'm, I took you too lightly. Yeah. It's, that's honestly, he's a blue belt. I was like, I did not expect that. But that guy's full of surprises. He's way better than a blue belt. Shout out. But... That's the thing. He's purple belt now. He's purple belt now. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But here's the thing. He was a blue belt at the time. I didn't respect his game enough. He caught me and I'm like, right, we're dialing up that f-ing respect knob, man. <laughs> <laughs> like we're taking the respect up at least two levels because- Which has a pulley that's directly linked to the intensity knob. Of the roll. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, 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 no. Turn it up to 10. So here's the thing. If you are doing well against higher belts, they're going to, yeah, they're going to roll you harder because it- they can't just have you trash in their game, right? Yeah. And so, and I think that that is like, like say to, to, the, to this person, if, if they're, and I don't know their sentiment, but if they're like, man, it's getting, like that's actually, it's getting me down. I don't like this. I'm getting injured. Then it's like, well, maybe, maybe there's a, a change in how you could approach your training with that individual. Or maybe there's a communication that could be had to, to because there is like, even for a, like as a black belt, I can admit to you that there's insecurity of when course. rolling, right? Oh, of course. It's there. Like you're constantly, you're constantly grappling with your own ego and own expectations. And skills and, so, and yeah. all the things. And so when, like, so when you're rolling with someone who's lower ranked than you and they're giving you a hard time, you're like, you're prone to making some pretty f- primitive decisions, which sure. are smash this. C- <laughs> 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 right? So, so, so. But if I have a good relationship with that person and I respect their jitsu and I know them and I'm like, yeah, look, fuck, I'm black belt, but this purple belt's You're a motherfucker. Like, and if I've reconciled that in my mind and we've trained together for a long time, then I can really, I can, I can find myself grappling less with the ego. Sure. You know, and I just, that's a, that's a very nuanced thing, but um, potentially looking for ways to, to actually get to know that person better, I is, think is a good way for you both to have. Definitely. A better training relationship. I agree. And I think that's kind of the communication piece too. Like generally, if you understand where someone's coming from, then you know why they behave the way they behave, whether it's their jujitsu or just their, their personality. And it's, it's the good thing about jujitsu that over time you do get to know people. 
But I tell you what, if a two-stripe white belt's taking my back and <laughs> like potentially choking me, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Yeah. I don't care what their story is, you know. I'm like standing up doing that diving forward <laughs> roll where they sever their spine. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's, it's, it's a solution. <laughs> For potentially. Sure. Potentially. But so I was also told, um, this is in Brazil actually, that not to actually roll someone light if they are decent because you are giving them the respect of your jujitsu. That's respectful. By rolling them well, they know what good jujitsu is because if they are someone who intends to get good, they need to know the standard. Yeah. And you babying them with the roll, that's, that's not necessarily going to help them get better. Yeah. Then this isn't a, a, you know, a, you know, a get out of jail pass to just smash everyone lower belt than you, but it's more that if you are good, you will expect a bit of blowback for your, your skills. Yeah. Number four, there's something here which I didn't expect, Joe. What is number four? You are misunderstood. Uh, elaborate, please. So there's a large social aspect to jiu-jitsu, obviously. You, 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 know, you have some kind of relationship with all the people in your gym. Maybe you're new there and the relationship's pretty, you know, perhaps not there yet. But the idea is over time you, you develop some kind of a bond with people there. Now, if you are not a particularly sociable person... Right, if you're a little bit distant socially, if you don't, you know, and, and we, we all know people like this, right? Maybe not a lot of eye contact, not a lot of upfront kind of offering conversation kind of thing. Introverted maybe. Yeah, that's right. Like, and there's plenty of people out there like that, right? Um, other folks can misunderstand that mm. and they can be like, they could mistake that perhaps for arrogance. Sure. Or some kind of feelings of superiority or, you know. Sure. And that then lends itself to them approaching the training and, oh, this mother thinks they're better than me what mm. they didn't ask me yeah. how i am today yeah you know like it won't look me in the eye when we when we slap and bump yeah like like these little things which culturally to most of us are like oh these things matter like this is good etiquette yeah definitely to some people it's it's either not in them it's just not a part of their their it's not in their head to do those things or perhaps they're actually they actually have an aversion to some of well, those they things. feel yeah shy or it's intimidated to even yeah. make don't want to make eye contact with the black belt. That's right. Yeah. So I think just like the the point there is that like I think the the getting to know someone, be it like directly as a person, is really important. But it might even be indirectly, as in you say to your coach, "Hey, what's up with so and so?" When I I, I can't connect with them. like And, and coach might be like, oh man, like that. They're, they're autistic. Yeah, yeah right? There's that. <laughs> yeah, like that person is is on the spectrum or they, they struggle with large groups or whatever. Sure. And you're like, holy shit. Okay, I was totally misreading the scenario here. I've had that situation a couple of times recently where I've come to training with some water, but I haven't had any electrolytes and I've finished training and I've had to go to a convenience shop and buy myself some kind of sports drink, usually a Gatorade. It cost me like seven bucks it's small and it really doesn't contain that much of the good stuff that I'm looking for, which are the electrolytes. Sodi, on the other hand, is my partner when it comes to hydration and I'd simply just run out of it. And it sucks because I got to go buy expensive stuff that doesn't do anywhere near as good a job. I'm super stoked that we've been restocked with the Sodi and now I can be properly hydrated when I train jujitsu. This has always been an underexplored aspect of my training and I'm so stoked that we now have these guys in place to support us and also the listeners of the show. So if you want to be hydrated on the mats so that you can perform at your best and have the best mental clarity while training, get yourself some Sodi. Go to sodi.com.au. That's S-O-D-I-I.com.au. Get yourself some delicious hydration salts and use the code BULLETPROOF15 for 15% off. Go to sodi.com.au. Get yourself hydrated. I, I have a funny story about this. Shout out Sunny Mun. Sunny Mun is incredibly short-sighted. Uh, literally, not, not, not in her worldview, in literally, sh she read a lot of books, I don't know, like she cannot see more than probably half a meter, a meter away. It's all, fu it's all a, a blur. Mm. Many people thought she was a complete f snob because they'd only be like, and they'd, they'd wave and she'd just, meh. <laughs> <laughs> she just blank. Awesome. They were like, what's with this f bitch? <laughs> Why she just blank me all the time? 
Maybe that's why our relationship lasted a long time. She thought I was handsome. Maybe because she didn't see <laughs> she didn't see me up close that much, and it's like she's hey. always just keeping the distance. She was like, "Hey, he's, he's such a good-looking guy." That 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 blur over there. But it was so funny because she wore glasses, but she didn't wear glasses at jujitsu. So even at jujitsu tournament, people waved her, and she just eh. people like, "Dang, that bitch is cold." <laughs> no, she's short-sighted. She's actually a very lovely, warm human. <laughs> my, my partner Miss is the same. When she doesn't have her contacts in, can't see. She can't see beyond a couple of meters. Yeah, and so you know, neighbors will like wave, and she'll just like blank them. <laughs> <laughs> Stone cold. Yeah, but I mean, this is the thing. That's a great misunderstanding, right? But yeah. And yeah. so if you're like, if you're like about to roll with that person, and your cop mother didn't wave back. Yeah. You know, then you're like, oh, I'm gonna turn that intensity up get yeah. some respect over here yeah it's like uh like getting introduced to someone like i i honestly am terrible with remembering people's names but i remember their story so if they tell me oh i've got a dog and i've got a young kid who plays basketball i can remember that stuff but i may not remember their name so usually the way i bridge that gap to not be rude i'm like how's your kid going to basketball and they're like oh he remembers me and i'm like oh jeff george yeah <laughs> That guy, mate, bro, yeah. But it, it's a funny thing because if you do shake hands with someone and you, you, you know, you've had to be introduced to 30 people, it is new people. It's hard to remember everyone's name. Oh, I, I think that's an, yeah. I think you're never going to remember everyone, right? Like initially. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's guillotine guy. Yeah. That's neon neck guy. But I, yeah, I do think, you know, you can, yeah, you can, you can show your familiarity with someone without having to say their name. Yeah, even though it's a powerful thing to be able to say the name. Yeah, it's yeah, lovely. it's really good if you have that ability and you've cultivated it. It's it's great. But I mean, like we were saying before about the relationships piece, um, it all of this ties in together with like, you know, social skills, right? And we know that jujitsu is a community full of people with limited social skills. <laughs> you know, like some people are great, but there's plenty of people out there not sure how to how to do it. What is good if you're someone who's not sure, if you're like our friend, you're new in the game, but you've been there a little while, you're a two-stripe white belt or you, you love jiu-jitsu, you just want to get better. Cultivating relationships with people, like coming up with an excuse to talk to someone other than jiu-jitsu is a way to unlock um, understanding. And so even if it's you're not buddies, you're not going out to watch UFC together, or you're not having barbecues together, but you just, oh yeah, you've got kids and I've got kids or... You know, whatever it might be. Your just kids, that. Oh, yeah, I've seen kids before. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. With that phenomenon. How's, how's your lack of freedom, <laughs> lack of sleep and monetary bandwidth? <laughs> Is that good? I don't know shit about that. I'm single. Woo! <laughs> no. So here's the thing. I actually learned this from our monk. We used to go uh, to, to Buddhist meditation classes. And our, our monk, shout out Gen Dorning, who's now based in uh, Leeds, I believe. But he was in Melbourne. Awesome guy. Londoner, ordained monk, legend. He said he used to have this boss, this tyrannical boss. He worked in a shitty corporate job and he hated his boss. And at that time, he'd started learning about Buddhism and his monk had said to him, try to love your boss. He's like, what are you talking about? My boss is an asshole. My boss is so mean to me, makes me stay back. I miss Buddhism classes. This is bullshit. Like, I hate my job. I hate my boss. He said, yeah, okay, but think about someone you love. It's like, ah, oh, my brother. Okay, cool. Now, every time you talk to your boss, imagine it's your brother. Like, all the problems, all the bullshit he brings to you, just imagine that's your brother. And just by putting that frame on it, try, try to give him empathy. Try to give him understanding to, because it is your brother. Anyway, he started doing this for a bunch of months. And he said, my boss got better. My boss got nicer. My boss started being nicer to me. And he went to his monk about six months later. And he said, guess what? My boss changed. My boss got better. He's, he's a much nicer guy now. We're actually friends. He's like, no, you changed. You changed the way you looked at them. You changed the way you treated them. And as a result, they treated you differently. Mm. And that's the hard thing. It's often taking that brave step which is that no, i'm going to be the more understanding nicer person and then that that allows room for them to maybe do reciprocate absolutely i got um one one final thing that came to mind there is um you do tend to establish a dynamic with your training partners yes and you can totally undo that you can change that dynamic and one of the simplest ways to do that i had this with um with a good friend shout out locky over at balmain who is a mother beast absolute mother train with and we were both just, we'd have these full-on intense roles. 
and it would, you know, it would often end in submission, could go either way, Whoa. probably went his way more often than not. <laughs> um, but like I- intensity, right? And, and there were a couple of times I, Fuck, I think I, I really could have injured myself in that one. And uh, we had a chat. I was like, bro, I can't remember how it came, but it was like, I was like, bro, f- our roles are intense. Like, yeah, tell me about it. I was like, you know what, man? I don't actually think we're getting the best out of our training by doing that. And we both agreed. And it was like, how about we just f-ing simmer it back a little bit? And we were like, we're both like, mad idea. And our roles instantly became less intense, way more technical, and heaps more beneficial for both of us. Nice. And it was a cool thing, I guess, because we were both on the same page with that. Mm. Could be the, the, the case that maybe we weren't, in which case nothing changes. But I think sometimes opening up that, the space for that conversation is, is enough to just like take the heat out of it mm. so that you can like, I, so that both people be like, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's go hard. Like let's push ourselves, but let's not f-ing injure each other. Yeah. You know? And that's fair. Boom, boom. There it is. Hopefully you fit one of those archetypes. Shout out to our, our man who sent that through. Uh, if you've got questions for us, fire them through. You can hit us on the Instagram, on the YouTube, or you can send them to our voicemail and we'll play them on the Q&A show. You go to our webpage, bulletproof.bjj.com. Go to the podcast page, leaves a voicemail. Boss. You.